the training series part seven. In this part, we're going to be continuing to discuss methods for toilet training. So we're up to method number three. This is the method that we'll call the slow method. Now, when I say slow method, I do mean that it will take time and time can be anywhere from maybe even a few days if it happens to work that way, but generally we're talking weeks, even months. So we're talking about we're starting this at a time where we see in advance that it's okay for this to take months into the future, that we're okay with that. And generally, as opposed to the second method, this method's going to work much better with a child with a very easygoing type of personality. Of course, it helps if, as the parent, I have that personality too, because I am going to have to have patience and it may take quite some time. What do we need in order to do this slow method? So the first thing we need is we want to start with an introduction to toilet training in a way that's already very easy and makes it very simple for the child to do something positive toward being trained, a very small thing. So let me explain what I mean. For example, let's say your child is already undressed because they're going to go into the bathtub. Or in the morning, they wake up and they're going to be dressed now for the day, but they have to first get undressed. So they're already undressed from their pajamas and they're not yet dressed for the day. This makes it much easier for them to then, you know, just be able to, let's say, sit on the toilet. So I could start by saying, um, gee, you're already undressed. Would you like to sit on the toilet for a minute? That's it, just sit. We're not mentioning, are you gonna make? We're not talking about, you know, um, anything further than just sitting. Now what happens is if they sit just for one second, let's say they sit for literally, you put them on maybe even half a second, okay? And they jump off, but they sat, they agreed to sit. Okay, they sat for that one second. What you can then say to them, is you just sat on the toilet. You see how I said that? I say it like it's an accomplishment because in the slow method, that is an accomplishment. We just took step number one. Now, I don't know how long it's gonna be till we get to step number two, but we did something. Now, what I have to remember with this method as well is that I only point out the positive which means that let's say next time I ask my child, would you like to sit? And the child says, no. So what I don't do at that point is have a discussion about why the, chi about why the, about why the child is saying no or tell the child how upset I am that they're saying no. And that of course we do in a number of ways, right? For example, we might say, but why? Oh come, just try for a second. Okay, so we might do the nagging thing. Or we, we might just say, I, I want you to sit, come and sit, come on, okay? Um, or um, where we say, well, you have to, okay? We might try to coerce, you have to sit. So any of, doing any of those things or creating a negative connection to toilet training, it's basically going to take this process and finish it, okay? So in order for the process to work, what we're saying is like this. When you do something that is a step forward in any way, it could be from sitting for one second, you're now sat for five seconds. We wanna make a comment on the positive. We wanna say, you sat for five seconds. And we just point it out like that. When we do that, we give that child a huge boost and we're helping the process along by connecting toilet training with something positive, which in its essence, it is. It's a beautiful thing when a child can become trained and can learn to take care of their needs on their own. So that's really what we're doing with this method. We're commenting on the positive. We're not focusing and commenting on the negative. Of course, one exception would be 
where the child is doing something that we have to focus on because even though it's not positive, it's not something that we allow them to do. So for example, if they would start playing with the toilet water, we would say something and we wouldn't want to be afraid. Oh no, but I can't say something negative. That's okay. It's just that we're not focusing on the negative in order to move them forward. Anything that I'm saying to move you forward is going to be positive here. And in that way, what will happen is the child will naturally want to be trained. It's something that, like I said, essentially it happens on its own anyway eventually, but we're speeding up the process by making it clearly positive for the child and connecting them to it in a positive way. So stay tuned for part seven where we discuss method number seven, which is quite different as you will see if you tune in.